All right, so we are talking about Mike Valenti and tanking. 97 won a ticket. We already went over that, who Mike Valenti is, what he's doing in this city, why he's here, and what his job is. His job is to be very, in my opinion, overly critical of the team, right? But this isn't about him. This is about us as fans. Are you happy that the Detroit Lions won a game, okay? And this is one of the reasons that I came up in this space. I came up in this space because of of dialogue like this. So I am going to play this in double speed, all right? Because it's an 11-minute video, and this segment will be way too long. So here's what Mike Valenti had to say, him and his sidekick Rico, about playing and winning on Saturday, how fans had to feel. So like I said, be ready. It will be in two times speed. I'll tell you, Friday, we had the spike store open. Everybody told me you rooting against the Lions. That you were done. That you were ready for draft pick of Palooza. So naturally, what do they do? They go out, but they don't win. Let me say something real quick. That buzz that you hear on the right, the left side of your headphones, that is from their atrocious sound. That has nothing to do with my system. Simple. It's complex. It's convoluted. It requires discussion. But here, here's what I want to do. And I said this to all the guys yesterday. I texted everybody. Oh, here's, here's your topic. I need you to tell me how the hell I'm supposed to feel about what I witnessed yesterday, which was bar none one of the worst football games I've ever watched at the professional level. It was an atrocity. And I'm sitting here, and even though Dan Campbell did his best to lose the game, they won the game. So you talk about setting your culture and you got to win to do it, and you're like, this is good. But then you're doing it in spite of your coach because his decisions are often idiotic. This is bad. And you're like, all right, well, our defense played great, except it was against the Pop Warner offense, and then your offense was a horse's ass. And you sit here and you go, how am I supposed to feel? I sit here and I know how I feel, but I don't know if I'm right in feeling it. I know I'm not comfortable with Dan Campbell. I know the fourth and inches empty set early on was idiocy. And I know the decision to go for it late and giving Aaron Rodgers half a field. Ergo, multiple shots at the end zone at the end of the game was also idiocy. And yet they won in spite of it, so I should feel happy. But wait, I don't. So hi, you're not the only one. No, and this is the genesis of the topic. You said it. Post game, you texted me. Mike, people don't know what to do. No. They don't know what to do. They were uncomfortably satisfied. That was the word that I came up with. Don't like we we won, but you could tell that they were ready to be angry. Their fists were balled up and they were frustrated and they were mad. And it was like, yeah, we won, but God, we still suck. And like, guys, you, you know, know what that was yesterday? Yeah, if you call up and you go, we won, nothing else matters. That's the equivalent of saying you drove drunk, but you got home safe. It you doesn't make it a good I decision. Don't. You get the slow clap right there, my friend. You, you get a, you know what? You get a no flag. You can do something egregious and I'm not flagging All you. All right, I got one in my pocket. That, you know what? That was an excellent analogy. You drove home wasted. But got away with it. And you got away with it. You and, didn't and, crash your car. And you no think you're going to act over. all proud about right. it. No, it's a terrible decision. Yeah. Because, because you could have killed somebody. The team bailed out the coach yesterday. Yep. Well, well, and, and, the, and the Packers injuries did. Well, that too. And Aaron Rodgers. But starting from the early on the first drive, instead of just taking three early in the game, Start the game off with some points. No, let's go for it. You lose it. And then Green Bay, this is, they, they were toying with you, and it didn't pay off. I'm sitting there watching the game with Rieger, and you know the one where it looked like the, the Packers scored, and I'm like, if I was Green Bay, I would probably challenge that because I think he scored. And that's when they end up on that first interception. Like, see, that's why you challenged that play early on. This was just overall, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Sure. It wasn't a great win. You got it. You can't be proud of it, but you did get the win. But remember, your coach, it's the, the fact that you decided, instead of letting the punter, the highest paid punter in the NFL, punt the ball, pin Green Bay deep. Offense has been struggling. You went for it. What, the 45-yard line? You gave Aaron Rodgers the ball back with two minutes and half a field to go. I don't think that there's not one coach in the NFL that would agree with Dan Campbell and say, that was a great idea. Yeah, did, no, hold on. Hold on, I disagree. Sean McDermott, if you have Josh Allen. Andy Reid, who's a genius with Mahomes. There okay, are instances okay, let, where let I could say okay, yes. yes. let me go back. If you're a bottom 15 team, right. there's no way you're doing it. And I'll give you the other one that's egregious, and I'll fight people tooth and nail on it. Fourth and inches, and you're an empty set. What, yeah. are, you, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? The strength of your team's the O-line. Jamal Williams has done a nice set. What, what, what are we doing? Well, I thought, like, is this possibly a quarterback sneak? Like just go empty set, move everybody out, and let the Packers think, oh my God, they're drunk, and he just runs up the middle. But here's the problem, guys. Friday, everybody was done. Everybody wanted them to lose. You were ready for draft pick up a loser. You were done. So now my question is, how do you process it when they do the most Lions thing ever, which is win? And they didn't win impressively, and they didn't win, and it was wildly entertaining. It was a slog. And you're like, okay, well, the defense wasn't terrible, and you're right. You were the benefactor of some breaks. You know, ball bouncing off a helmet or yeah, whatever. Who cares? But it's like, first play of the game, the Packers run 18 yard pass for Romeo Dobbs. Dead. Bakhtiari, dead. Aaron Jones, dead. And you're sitting there and you're going, well, damn, they should stop this team. None of these, none of these people are pros. I just feel like if you're done with Dan Campbell, that ain't good for you. And, and, and it wasn't a good look for him at all. No, and for the people who were like, hey, I'm ready to go get a quarterback and all this jazz. All right, I need you to tell me how I'm supposed to feel about that win. I told you I was done. I'm actively rooting against them. I hope they don't win the game the rest of the year. I have, I have, I've gone from being optimistic about them to hating them. And the Dan Campbell thing, I'm done with it. And yesterday, you drove home drunk and got away with it. Doesn't make it a good decision. Dan, Dan Campbell's going to kill you. Him and his in-game management, God help us, if we ever get players here and this team starts winning games, you know what Dan Campbell's going to do? He's going to F the pooch. He's going to F you in the worst possible way, no, in the just, biggest possible game, because this dude can't run a game. You, yeah, you'll probably need a quarterback or somebody who will just override and like, you know what, I'll, oh, I'll take the heat. You mean Rodgers did yesterday? Did you see that play? When he changed the play at the goal line, and you could see LaFleur going, what the F? He changed it. I think it was supposed to be a run. He throws the fade back. Was that the one to uh, Bakhtiari? No, 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 no. Later in the game, when they had the four cracks, oh. Rodgers changed that play. Okay, yeah, that didn't make sense. Because so, I was like, okay, that was a wasted play. Hey, and the coverage was there, but it also was on the receiver on the right route. Yeah. The point is, how are we supposed to feel about it? 
You won in spite of your coach. And, I, you know, guys, I got to be honest. Now, if you don't want Campbell and you want the quarterback or you want Will Anderson, I have bad news for you. You can't win a game the rest of the year. Texans are going to pass you. Carolina's going to pass you. And the worst case scenario is you end up drafting third. You don't get Anderson. You don't get Bryce Young. And then you're left with OSU system quarterback. We're not sold on. Will Levis or whatever. So, hey, if you're all in on the win, tell me why. You know, don't, don't, don't slander CJ Stroud. I don't, I don't want him. Yeah, you told me how bad Jane Daniels is going to be. I don't like Jane Daniels. Well, you just said he's, he can't win. He can't. He pulled it off. He's a good college quarterback, but like he was so bad at ASU, his teammates bleeped in his locker. Well, like, come on. Mistakes were made. Uh, exactly. <laughs> See, here's the thing, fellas. All year, we've been talking about how bad the defense has been. We've been talking about Campbell going forward on fourth down because it seems in certain situations he doesn't trust his defense. Well, while the Packers did not look good offensively, part of that was due to the Lions' defense. The Lions' defense actually forced turnovers. They actually look decent. And at the end of the game, when you have an opportunity to tell your defense, I trust you, I'm going to punt this ball, and I'm going to trust that you can win this game for us. You've been playing well, keep it going. Instead, you decide to go forward on fourth down and give them a short field to defend. They got it done in the end, but you cannot continue to make those decisions. Campbell, in my mind, he's a trainer. The players can't trust him anymore. While they go out there and play for him, they can't trust that he's going to put them in the right position. Can't be. The defense has to look at him and say, dude, we've been playing well all game, and you do this to us? Can't work. Defense is very opportunistic. I mean, geez. <laughs> The amount of bad throws around the goal line were just there. I mean, it, it, when Aiden, Aiden's touchdown looked like he was a receiver. It's like, Aaron, what are you doing? But you're right. When all your young guys step up and, and they really go out there and they ball out and they show Aaron Glenn and he's all fired up and, yeah, your coach can't get out of his own way because his, his decisions were just like, just, just take the three points early in the game. Just, no, no, no. If you're not going to take the three points, you can't be an empty set with Jared Goff. Right. That's not Josh Allen. That's not Justin Fields. That's, I mean, what are we doing here? And then I don't even know who to blame, but if you get the ball to start the second half, just go ahead and say, you know what? We don't want it. You're going to intercept it anyway. Six times this year, they turned the ball over, coming out of the half. It's so, like clockwork. So again, if you're listening and you're nodding your head, let's have that conversation. If you're listening and you're balling your fists like one of these LeBron memes, look, tell me why. Tell me why you're celebrating it when Friday it was unanimous, everybody was done. You know? And there you go. And there you go. And, and for me, listen, I agree with a couple of things that, that he said. First of all, Rico is like a, I don't know what, it's like, it's like LeBron James, you know, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Rico is Scottie Pippen. Sorry about the buzz. That was their audio. I don't understand how you are a radio station and you have a buzz. Somebody needs to listen. Wolver Sports, to me, has hor horrendous audio as well. I don't understand that. All right. So my thing is this. You heard them. What I agree on is this. The fourth, got, fourth down, I think it's got to be better play calling. I said the same thing as I was watching the game, that if this dude is, why are we in, in, in an empty set against one of the best kind of pass uh, d defense in the league, right? Why are we in an empty set? Jamal Williams, somebody should have been back there to block. I do agree with that. I do agree with Jared Goff having to clean up his turnovers, 100%. What I do not agree with is tanking. You play to win the game. You play to win the game. And, and what offends me, folks in the chat, is that we would rather root for the Detroit Rams than root for our team to not pick in the top 10. Right? Just think about that. What's up, Zay? That's facts. That's facts. Says empty set with your, with golf to pass for a first is a horrible play call. It's a lot of that going on. And I don't know if that falls on Ben Johnson or if that falls on the head coach. Whoever it falls on, they need to clean that up. But if you are watching this on playback, you're watching the video of this segment, Do you are you upset that the Lions won a game? Are you upset that the Lions, to me, that is dumb. And we've talked about this at length about why winning is important. Losing sets the trend. Winning sets a different one, right? We all complain about what losing feels like, yet we're upset. Some fans are. Some fans are upset, but I don't understand. And, and my philosophy since I've been on YouTube has been this. This is my quote. If you want your team to lose, don't be mad when they do. If you want your team to lose, don't be upset when they do. You can't call for Dan Campbell's job. He could call the dumbest game you've ever seen. He could go for it on every single fourth down. He could never kick a field goal. He could blitz every play. You cannot be upset if you want your team to lose. And, and then they do. Winning feels fantastic. Isn't it so much better to win? Isn't the week a little bit quicker? Isn't the sun a little bit brighter? Isn't your day a whole lot better? Because you don't have to hear about how miserable your team is for the next seven days. I was a little offended because the storyline has been how bad Aaron Rodgers is instead of how good the Detroit Lions defense was. 
That's offensive to me. Oh, Aaron Rodgers should have never came back. Oh, Aaron Rodgers overthrew. How about Aiden Hutchinson made a second overall pick play? And not that Aaron Rodgers is washed because we can't beat the Green Bay Packers otherwise. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How much do you agree with Mike Valenti and Rico regarding winning when it comes to the Detroit Lions?